it was just a nightmare, and there was no one who was going to take care of him, except for me and my mom, and, and that's what we did to the very end. And uh, unfortunately, you know, you can't just um, you can't just walk away. Now, in the White Lion days, it's not just you that's young. You know, you're in your twenties, but your parents are young too. Mm -hmm. There's really no medical stuff going on. And you know, I remember the tour bus pulling up, and uh, two years. It's like, oh, there's a two year tour. Fine, I don't, you know. Make it a three-year tour. None of this stuff happened. But as you get older, there's there's responsibilities Absolutely. and things, and there's uh, you know financial too. It's you know when you're young, I never you know I remember when White Lion went out, and me, Mike, and Greg and James, we never spoke about. I don't think anybody ever said how much are we making tonight. No one said a word about money because we were so used to not having any that uh, nobody cared. But then it gets to a point in your life where you know you got bills to pay. And it's not just you that's going to suffer. Yeah, there's other people who are going to suffer yeah. and say, yeah. you know, well, I'm going to go out and do this uh, White Lion reunion tour, and I'm not going to really make much, but I'm going to have a blast. Well, you can't, you know, there's bills to be paid, and you can't tell the electric guy, and you know, well, I'm just I'm not having a blast. You got to pay bills. You know that, and like I said, the family illness, and uh, it was just, it just always seemed to be something. And to answer. Um, so you've it's, never it's, said never to a reunion. It's right. just not been the right time. You have is, more important issues. Know, is, is Ed still on the line? No, I mean, no. He has these questions. But, no, but uh, and then obviously the other thing no, is... No, I never said no. I, I never said no, but the problem is it's... it's uh, now I'm going to use these uh, stupid analogies I always do. You know, when you got a girlfriend and you break up on a, and, and she's basically cheating on you in front of you, saying, well, if you don't get back together with me, this is what I'm going to keep doing. And the more she cheats, the more you're not going to get back with her. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that... Um, I have to keep watching, you know, Mike do these tramps, white line, and all that stuff. And I've always wished the guy luck. But the more he does these things, the more it makes me not want to, you know, be a part of anything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know how much I can do to stop it. I just, you know, wish I could. Um, I wish that didn't exist. I wish that part of it didn't exist. I understand what, what he's doing and all that stuff. I don't like it. I don't, you know. I wish he wouldn't do it, but I understand why he's doing it. You know, I, I wish him luck, but I'm not going to sit here and tell anybody I'm not going to do the White Lion thing ever again. I did kind of lie to you a little bit, Eddie, when you had asked me one time, are the rumors of a hand injury true? And I said, no, they're false. I mean, they, they actually were true. Mm -hmm. I did injure, I, I snapped something in my wrist about 1997, I think it was, that just prevented me from playing all day. You didn't tell me. Get the hell out of here, right? Your microphone's off. He didn't tell me the truth about that. Well, <laughs> no, I know. You know, look. It wasn't, a, it wasn't a hand injury that, in other words, I didn't know if I was making up my own excuses. This is going to be Dr. Phil now on the Eddie show. <laughs> but I did, have, I did have a hand injury. And the thing is, is that I was the type that played 14 hours a day. I mean, it was ridiculous what I was doing. I, I used to get home 4 o'clock in the morning from club shows and play another two hours. I just was always playing. And to stay at a, you know, guitar players will understand, to get to a certain level, you have to maintain it. It's like an athlete. And basically, I was like a, a marathon runner who couldn't run more than 10 feet. So how was I going to keep it up? Right. So these are things I'm hoping to get over. Where does that stand now? Do you feel better? Do you still play? Do you still well, practice? It's gotten better, but I haven't tried to do, like, um, I just remember, the you know, the actual injury I had was when I was touching the steel strings it would feel like I was getting a, it was I was touching a live wire like I was having electrical shocks and the doctors basically told me they said listen you know it's uh it's 50 50 you could lose your hand the use of your hand or you could be cured and it's up to me to want you know to decide do I want to play through pain and in the midst of all of this the family stuff was happening and everything else. So I had excuses for myself coming left and right. Right. No, I can't play because of my hand. No, I can't play because my dad's not feeling well. I can't play because of this. You know, it's... But to answer his question after all of this, I would never... I'm not going to say no, it'll never happen. Right. I would love for it to happen today. Right. To be honest with you. I just don't think it can happen today. Right. But I'm not going to shut the door. And Mike Tramp knows that. And what I keep appealing to Mike is stop, stop shutting the door in, in my face. You know what I mean?
by doing the, the 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 records and the bands that you know white line with other people and all this stuff and and doing versions of the band right right uh let's do a song right now and we'll come back and i mean we'll, so much more we need to get into so many more phone calls here as well but i want to of course talk about we're talking about Vito's career and and everything that he's gone through and where we are now in 2007 with Vito in the studio and hanging with us for the first time in about 15 years but I think it's important to remember uh the music that Vito has made and hopefully music he will make again somewhere down the line and there is a new release that has arrived in stores called White Lion the Definitive Collection it's a two CD set basically a greatest hits compilation but the really cool thing about this is there's about 10 or 12 live songs on here recorded here in New York City at the Ritz on the Pride Tour and I know Vito you haven't heard this yet you don't even know you know where this came from or what the quality of the sound is on this but I was actually just cracking I, I, there's there's someone <laughs> there's some guy on the internet it's great I was uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot there's, of internet presence for you I've heard from a lot of your you know, these fan forums and stuff that are Vito brought on whatever just, I'm uh, cracking I'm just thinking because there's a guy who's so upset about this whole thing tonight that you're coming on here? Well, he's he's really, I mean, he's really into the whole death metal thing. You can tell by the whole thing that he's doing, and he's just like he's having a, a just a fit. Well, if he's into the death metal thing, why would he care about my show? I, I never, I never play that stuff. Exactly, it's not what this show is. Exactly. No, I just uh, you're talking. I just uh, I, I'm picturing his emails. Why would he just... even know? Why would he even be on the Vito Brada fan site if he's into death metal? I, well, I know, but I'm looking at you know. I just uh, somebody emailed me this website. I couldn't tell you what uh, the you website can't even was. Get into that stuff. But, that's, uh, that's just. It was just hilarious. Like I said, you know, I never did anything to this guy. <laughs> Well, that's but, the greatest thing. You get you get all these emails. I mean, I've been getting them for years. Really, you just it's like my girlfriend said. The, what could, you know? I said, what could it be that set this guy off? And just she said, just the fact that you exist <laughs> is just destroying this See, person. I so. can relate to that because I get emails constantly from people who know every single word and thing that I've said on this show, but tell me how much they hate me and hate the show. And I say, well, <laughs> then how come you just were able in your hate email to rattle off every record I played and guest I've had for the past 20 years that you must be listening? I mean, if I hate something, I don't listen to it. I'm just picturing this guy tonight just, <laughs> just twitching in his chair, you know, and I... <laughs> listening to his Venom records and cursing you. <laughs> cursing well, actually, us, whatever. Actually, I... I, I re I think we play with Venom. Did we play with I Venom? I don't know. <laughs> I can't imagine that, Bill, but maybe. Who knows? I, I don't know. There could be a possibility that we play with Venom. <laughs> but this was the, uh, the early days. This All was right. the very early days. Let's play a song. For, we'll send this out to the death guy. metal guy. Right. Uh, this is the brand new released live recording that came from the Ritz in the late 80s here. Uh, Vito and White Lion, Greg D'Angelo, James Lomenzo, and Mike Tramp performing in New York City in what was a very big show. This was a, you know, this was you guys taking the next step just before Pride really blew up uh, playing the Ritz, right? Yeah, I think this was before. What could it have been? I think it was before the Aerosmith tour, and I think this was when the whole thing just uh, happened. All right, let's play it right now. This is a, a song, the studio version of which comes from the Pride album. It's one of my favorite favorite songs from White Lion and probably my favorite on Pride. It's a live version of Lady of the Valley, available on White Lion, the definitive collection. More music, more calls, more stories as we continue. Vito Brada here in the studio with us. Yeah. 